Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. So real quick from yesterday on that BYD bit, just to emphasize, I really did intend for that more to be a question. Is there something more going on here that we should at least be aware of? And as I said yesterday, I'm definitely not ready to make any statements. It was really just bringing up some points. But now I do understand that some of those sources, as you guys pointed out, may have some ulterior motives. So thank you for taking the time to share that. I'll definitely be careful going forward. I never want to be a FUD spreader. So please call me out when you think it's necessary. So again, if it was not clear, my intent was really to just bring up those points and say, hey, what do we think about this? And let's keep an eye on it going forward. From Cox Automotive, in the United States, the EV market share hit 7.2% of total new car sales for the quarter. This is a new record. Yes, this is just full BEVs, no hybrids. EV sales in Q1 increased 44.9% year over year, hitting 258.8 thousand, which of course means we're now on track to hit over 1 million BEV sales this year for the first time. Here's something we need to touch on though. Tesla's share of the EV market fell to 62.4% when a couple years ago it was as high as 79%. So what's going on here? Here's that Q1 data for the United States. Now, when it comes to Tesla's share of the EV market, naturally, it's just math. When you have basically every other auto company releasing EVs into the market, the overall EV market is going to grow sometimes at a faster clip than Tesla's share of that market. I mean, think about it. Tesla can't maintain a 75% share of EVs into perpetuity. It's basically impossible. At the end of the day, in the future, Tesla only needs to hit about 20% of the overall car market to actually reach its goals of around 15 million cars per year. I know the number is 20 million, but I'm more expecting 15. So I just want everybody out there to have proper expectations that this number for Tesla, this 62%, it's going to continually go down as all of these other companies release more electric vehicles into the market. Because again, from a simple math standpoint, we have Tesla, one company, going up against all of these other companies in terms of number of new EVs into the market. And that's clearly not a fair comparison. To put a bow on this, the metric to watch is Tesla's share of the overall auto market, not just their share of the EV market, because that latter number will continue to come down and that's a-okay, to be expected, not a problem at all. At least not in my book. The most exciting thing though may be this, Cox Automotive mentions this tipping point that may be fast approaching. Here we have the good old technology adoption S-curve. So Q1, we were at around 7.2%. We're still basically right here under this 10% threshold. But what happens once you get above 10%, as we've said many times in the past, things start to get very interesting. And yes, obviously different technologies in different times have different slopes to this curve. So there's not just one set curve. However, generally speaking, 10% is that level to serve as a tipping point as it has many times in the past. Maybe it's just me, but I think some of us that are really plugged into the EV space start to feel like we're already up here somewhere, when in reality, we're still all the way down here. And if you want the actual breakdown by model, here it is, go ahead and pause, and don't forget, you can zoom in. Also in March, for the first time in about 20 months, the average transaction price for a new vehicle in the United States fell below the suggested MSRP. The ATP for a new vehicle in the US in Q1 declined to $48,000 and the auto manufacturer's incentive spend rose to the highest level in a year, hitting 3.2% of the average transaction price in March. What does this tell us? Well, there's a slowdown with less demand means lower prices. So the ATPs are coming down while simultaneously manufacturers are spending more relative to those average transaction prices to actually close these deals. And not to put my guy Tibby on blast here, but just to point out, remember Tesla cannot grow with the overall market. That's not sustainable in my opinion. And remember, yes, Tesla's goal is 50% growth year over year, but one year it could be 20, one year it could be 60, one year it could be negative. It's never going to be 50% each year. Just not how it goes. 
One last point here when it comes to this slowdown in the auto market and these prices rolling over at least for a bit, I do think some informed consumers are now going to wait to see if Tesla and other companies lower their prices further, just like people are already doing in China. Because honestly, with everything going on with the economy and the macro, if you don't need a car right now, it could make some sense to wait because it does seem at least likely that prices do head down before they were to head back up. And as always, this is one point I wish more people remembered, price cuts will be more problematic for everybody else than they are for Tesla. A quick PSA, if you didn't know, many individuals' knee and back pain can actually be traced back to wearing the wrong shoe. It's kind of obvious when you think about it, a lot of modern shoes have toe boxes that are too narrow, not allowing our toes to spread out and work as intended. Some of you already know I'm a big fan of Vessi when it comes to shoes, not only are they comfortable and flexible, but I happen to think they're pretty stylish, and these have a wide toe box. They're also 100% waterproof. Vessi is the sponsor of this video, but I would happily talk about them to you guys even if they weren't, and some of you have bought a couple pairs and reached out to tell me that you've been enjoying them, so thank you. Yes, I put them to their marketing test, and after fully submerging them in water, the paper towel stayed bone dry. They're incredibly easy to put on and take off, which is a must for me, and they have a nice variety of styles and colors to choose from. The insoles are removable in case you want to use your own orthotics. So if you'd like to support the channel in this way, you can get 15% off your entire order using my link in the description below or heading to vessi.com slash electrified. Thanks in advance. We have Berlinergy reporting on the Tesla insured number for Tesla China, but I'm not seeing it yet from the CNEV post. As you can see, the latest week they have up is April 2nd. Now I am hearing some rumors that they may stop reporting these numbers, which would be a bummer, but I have not been able to confirm those. So for now, let's consider this a preliminary number. And if you wanted to compare it to week one of quarter one, that number was 2,110. So a pretty good reading for the first week of the quarter as Tesla China shifts back to exports. From Solar Quotes in Australia, last year the Tesla Powerwall prices went from about $12.7,000 to $16.2,000. Well, this year the prices are coming back down. The latest drop about $1,699, putting the current price at $12,900. So far this year, Powerwall prices in Australia down $3,300. I will always be in the camp. Lower prices are better for the consumer and open up Tesla's products to a wider market. So I like to see things like this. Jörg Steinbach gave some public comments about Giga Berlin and how it's really having a good positive impact on the Brandenburg area, saying the area is gaining momentum and specifically in the manufacturing industry, especially the automotive sector, is the driver of some GDP growth in the region. He attributed some of that growth to Giga Berlin and said that the country benefits from this, which is a huge no-brainer, and he said the Tesla effect is real. It's simple, think about the entire EV supply chain. If you're at one of those companies, who do you wanna hitch your wagon to? A company like Tesla with proven history and a track record and demand, or one of these other newer companies that may not be around in five or 10 years? The answer is obvious. And it's exactly because of this Tesla effect why almost every country on the planet wants Tesla to set up shop in their region so they can create more jobs, bring all of the supply chain there, and boost the local economy and in turn their GDPs. Elon was on a pretty big Twitter spaces last night talking with the BBC. A lot of drama, we're not going to get into it. I just wanted to highlight that he did say he did not sell Tesla stock because he lost faith in the company. Obviously, I think we all should have known this, but he did it because he desperately needed money to buy Twitter. Elon also said Twitter is roughly break even right now and thinks Twitter could be cash flow positive this quarter, just six months after he purchased it, which would reduce the chances he would need to do an emergency sale of Tesla stock, which he did say he does not plan to do anytime in the next two years or so. We're not really going to jump into this one. Rob touched on it a bit last night and these new proposed regulations from the EPA are not finalized and they won't be until sometime, maybe early 2024, but it's just stricter emissions requirements. So we'll see if they can push something like this through to tighten the noose a little bit on some of these combustion engine makers, but we'll see. 
The Say website is live for Tesla questions for earnings next week. This link will be below if you want to vote or ask your own question. Sorting by votes, the top two questions are one, Cybertruck specs, I totally get it, and two, Tesla energy, specifically Megapack, I also love it. Some of you will know I've said in the past I would love Tesla Energy to start breaking out more detail from Megapack's power wall, solar roof, etc. I don't think we're gonna get it anytime soon, but hopefully one day. And just two more, when will owners be able to transfer FSD? Maybe never. And then a question on 4680s and how things are going. Just wanna highlight how some of these comments are a bit misinformed. Not making any political statements here, but this Mike Gallagher said, Tesla seems entirely dependent on the largesse of the federal government via tax breaks and upon access to the Chinese market. So has Tesla benefited a little bit from some tax breaks? Absolutely, just like almost every company has. But Elon just said, and I happen to agree, that if the government took away all of the EV tax credits, at least that one example, Tesla's competitive position would actually improve relative to other automakers, meaning everybody else needs the tax breaks way more than Tesla. And has Tesla benefited from being in the Chinese market? Absolutely, but there are plenty of other non-Chinese companies operating in this market. And not only that, but with each passing year, Tesla is decreasing its reliance on that market, becoming a more and more global company. So yes, I know in politics, almost everybody has ulterior motives, but at the end of the day, these people are just making themselves seem so detached from reality and from the truth. A largesse is just money or gifts given generously. Rivian was having a lot of problems with the powered tonneau cover, and so they've been switching over to a manual one. They just sent out an email saying that is going to be delayed until sometime this summer. Clearly, the tonneau cover has been giving Rivian problems now for a while, so I'm very curious to see how Tesla handles this situation. Rivian CFO made some comments last week that I missed, and they're expecting a positive gross profit by the second half of 2024. The electric delivery van production paused last quarter to integrate the LFP battery packs. With Rivian's R2 platform for the smaller upcoming vehicles, they are considering global markets. I'll put this full thread below. One week from today, we get the unveil of the upcoming Polestar 4. This will be revealed on April 18th at the Shanghai Auto Show. They just mentioned the aerodynamics of a coupe or coupe, depending on where you live, with the space of an SUV should be the fastest Polestar production car to date and a new breed of SUV coupe. Here's the Polestar 3 with delivery set for later this year. I love the look of this car. I do wish it was a bit more affordable. So we'll see if the 4 is anything like this, maybe a bit more aggressive in the back half, but we'll find out in a week. Sawyer shared this and just to put it on your radar, this company Ascend Elements claiming the biggest lithium recycling facility in North America in Georgia. Their capacity is enough to break down about 70,000 electric vehicles every year. Of course, the supply isn't there, but the capacity is. Right now, 80 to 90% of what's going into Ascend's Covington facility is scrap materials from battery factories. So yes, one day in the future, whether it's 10 years, 20, who knows, recycling will be a sexier topic. We're just not quite there yet. However, just know a time is coming when recycling will further drive down the cost of electric vehicles. I'm here for it. Don't forget to check out Bessie if you're interested. Take advantage of that discount. Thank you in advance. You can find me on Twitter at DylanLoomis22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.